Hello, everyone. It is Monday, March 18th, 2024, and I hope you guys are having a great day. So, didn't have a pick on Friday. I made a video yesterday going over some of the trades I took in the week. I'm trying to learn from some of the new strategies I am attempting. But let's get into the swing of things on our market analysis. So, we're going to start with our longer term market bias here. We're still bullish on a fundamental um, and a technical basis in the market. The economy is still strong. We're doing well in a high interest rate environment, but we do have one speed bump coming up, which is the FOMC statement. Now, the Fed has been hawkish the entire span of its rate hikes. It's pricing in, I, th I think the Fed is saying two to three rate cuts this year. And to me, it feels like it's going to be in the back half of the year. If you look at the market expectations for rate cuts, they have a 55% chance that's going to happen in June and an 80% chance is going to happen uh, in July, which I think is still a little bit optimistic. So I believe the Fed could splash some cold water on the market. I don't think it's going to break the market uptrend. You can see here we how we had some negative Fed reaction and then the uptrend continued. So I don't think it's going to change the uptrend, but um, it is something to watch out for in the short term. Um, on another fundamental basis, you know we're keeping an eye um, on what's happening in China. Um, our earnings have already kind of come through, and they've been going received pretty well. Our earnings season's coming up in about another month in April, so that's kind of the next. Uh, piece of information that we are looking at for the future. But fundamentally, I think things are looking fine. The other thing we have to keep in mind for the end and the later end of this year is the election cycle in the US. Um, I was reading a JPM report. They're saying how because we have so much information early in elections now, it reduces a lot of uncertainty of elections in the market. So there'll still be an impact, but perhaps not as much in the past because we didn't have access to that level of information. Let's switch over to the technical bias, which we are still bullish, but instead of a three, remember my skill goes from negative three is bearish, three is bullish. I went from a three to a two. And the reason was the change in the price action. And I'm learning, I'm always learn a lot from Pete, but we had a very strong move up here tight price action, compression, where there should have been a dip, we compressed, we broke out, should have been a dip, compressed, we broke out. And then over here, we got some major news pending. And uh, pretty much since February over here, we've had gaps down, gaps up, oops, gaps down, gaps up. And the momentum is not as strong because we get these big dips and then we have more ground to recover versus a compression where we don't really lose any ground and we can still advance more. If we look at the price action in starting from March, the market hasn't really gone up that much, right? And still, it was, it was still decently strong in February. We can see here how it's starting to compress and form a bit of a range. I was taking a look at the H1 chart today, and you can see sort of the range bound nature that the market's been in um, for the past few weeks. Gone up, test new all time high. Come back, test around 509, test all time high again, come back, test 509, and back up. So we are range bound today. I think the FOMC will probably get us out of the range, and I think the market is going to be waiting for that piece of information. So today, there might be some opportunities to trade. Uh, tomorrow, it should be very, very limited. If I was a day trader um, here, is what I'm looking for here. I want this low of the day to hold. We have a bullish 1OP cross over here. We've had a long pullback, but there's been plenty of buyers today, and we're going to get into that in a second. But I think day traders can still favor the long side. Swing traders, I would probably pare down my exposure, but keep the FOMC in mind. If you have a lot of positions on, consider taking a hedge, something like in VIX. Um, you know, as a market's making a new high, um, it can do quite well. If we look at VIX in the last FOMC statement, you can see here how we had a pretty nice spike up 
um, in VIX. And uh, it has been a little bit more spiky recently instead of just going straight down. So um, I would, you can get a in the money VIX call expiring this week. See how that goes. Let's see what else uh, we can talk about here. So we talked about the long-term market bias. It's, it's too bullish. Our short-term market bias is a little bit more neutral. Market's in a wide range. Uh, we're not worried about a capitulation. Also not worried about the bottom falling out. We do have to worry about potentially a pullback in terms of the FOMC statement and if they splash any cold water on what we're doing. Um, we're looking for support um, and resistance. So support for the day, I have it at 509, uh, this prior level here that's held pretty well. And resistance uh, is literally the last all-time high, which was around this 517 level. You can see there's a lot of price reaction at that point. So swing traders, I think I would stay sideline. If you have a very strong stock, I would, you could say maybe take an overnight swing on a call debit spread. Um, I think something like GPS would be uh, pretty excellent for that. Broke out as compression. Uh, new, I believe it's a 52-week high. But let's check the chart for GPS. Yeah, definitely a 52-week high. Uh, not an all-time high, which is coming up somewhere over here. Um, but very, very nice, strong price action. So I would get in on GPS. Um, I'd like, I like an M15 alert on this kind of stock. So when I get that M15 alert, you can see here, it's a nice buy, pull back. This low is bigger than this low, get a nice move higher. So I think getting, G getting in on GPS CDS <laughs> off an M15 alert, uh, would probably be my ideal entry candidate for a very short-term swing. So day traders here, let's look at what's happening in the day. Uh, tech was pretty strong earlier in the day. Uh, mega cap tech was very strong. There was some bullish news on Google. Um, the rally breadth wasn't very strong. IWM wasn't very strong today. Finance wasn't super strong today. TLT was down. Look the TLT chart. TLT was down and it's below the 100 SMA, which is a bit of a bearish sign. Our flight to safety assets were weak though, and there were more stocks on heavy buy. So our marketing components today, I put it as a two bullish. If we had a lot of rally breath, then that would be a three. But because we didn't lack have the full rally breath, we still had tech, which is good. But the, because we didn't have the full rally breath, then we couldn't really be as confident in terms of the components driving the market for today. So our intraday bias was that we had a big gap up, but not really any major news to justify it, in my opinion. So we had to see if it held. We had a probe early, a test in the first half an hour, and then we had a new high of the day at 1020. So I thought that was pretty nice. However, we, got to, we had this bearish cycle pending. We knew that we weren't overly bullish. So let's see if this has a chance to produce. And lo and behold, you can see it's producing. If I was really bullish, I wanted to see that this cycle would hold VWAP and we'd have a bearish, uh, a bullish divergence in the first 30 to 40 minutes. Um, we break through this high plus high minus trend line and a little bit of a green candle here. Um, and then we'd get a little bullish cross and then we have a nice entry point to float higher first of the day. But we lost, we broke through VWAP, which I was like, this is not great, but it could still recover. And then this candle here said, okay, well, we're not really gonna be anywhere bullish anytime soon. Now, the move has been going down, as I mentioned previously, a little bit of buying, move down, a little bit of buying, move down, big buying, move down, big buying, move down. So sellers are keeping a lid on this market. So we'll have to see if buyers are going to step in at the uh, open, which is right here. So the open has some support and the low of the day on the gap at 513.26. I don't view this price action as very, very bearish. And I believe that the low of the day will hold. But if we lose the low of the day, then we will be very, it'll be a little bit more bearish scenario and you would have to hold back on getting in on any swings. If you have some startup positions, you'd consider getting out for a scratch or taking the loss because the market isn't doing what we want it to do.
All right. So uh, a couple of picks that I like today, GPS I mentioned. MGM was also a really nice breakout through the SMA, through compression, but it was pretty close to this um, gap resistance over here. So you had to enter pretty early in the day. You can see it had pretty nice price action. Um, and it's, it's doing pretty well holding the gains as the market's going down, but um, we don't really have the market uh, situation and there's not a lot of room on top for the stock to move on. Uh, CPB had a nice breakout today through the SMA, nice volume, steadily grinding higher while the market's going down. So this is a nice breakout, very, very choppy stock. So again, only a day trade for this um, kind of stock. I don't feel comfortable holding it overnight. CAT is a much better swing trading chart. You can see how I was having a nice uh, steady action here. Pull back to the low view app coming up over here. Not my favorite M5 chart, but it's an excellent D1 chart. So works really well for a swing trade. On the bearish side here, Roblox was excellent. Um, I, I did see it here, but I wasn't as bearish earlier in the day. Uh, Roblox ended up being an ex excellent short. This is the ideal LRSI pullback where we have a weak move here, reject view app, and then we have a nice strong reaction from here to confirm the L RSI cross. And we broke the low of the day, nice steady action, bearish engulf, it was smacked down, another bullish engulf getting smacked down here. So um, I'd take some, some profits here uh, at this level in Roblox, it's done pretty well. If it breaks through, then you can consider getting back into the trade. Um, so my pick for today, and I'll have my day trade be my pick is PEP. So Here's here's what I saw with Pep. First, we got this 1 OP bullish cross and this LRSI uh, crossing up here at around 1225. Um, so I so I put on a starter position in Pep. When I got this double bottom, I added to Pep early. And here's my thinking here. First of all, market D1, I'm maybe a short term, I'm neutral, but uh, at least we have a gap up and we're holding that gap up. On an M5 basis, my bullishness was maybe a one to a zero. I'm not super bullish on the market. So this is going to be a position that I'm not going to add in very much later. I'm going to take my gains. The PEP D1 chart is also not amazing. It's not the worst, but it's not the best. I'd say it's pretty neutral or maybe a one bullish at most. So the D1 chart isn't great. The M5 chart to me is very, very strong. This is a three. Nice steady price action, a little bit parabolic. Compressed, held all the gains. Got this LRSI alert. This candle at 1220 confirmed it. So I entered around here and I added to the trade early at 1240 when I saw uh, this candle. I thought it was going to be a double top lower high. Now the market's coming down and testing support. What is PEP doing? PEP is actually rallying and moving up. So I'm going to ride PEP out. I have a full position on and I plan to take profits near 173 ish. So plan to take about a dollar of profits uh, on the stock provided that this level holds. Now, if we lose the low of the day, I'm going to consider exiting PEP for a small win because the market has now changed. My bias has changed because we have lost the low of the day. That's not what I wanted to see. I'm still neutral at this point, but if we lose that level, I'm out of the trade. So PEP is my day trade pick for today. I wouldn't, I'm not going to give any swing picks because personally, I don't, I'm not feeling, because of this pending news and we already have some swings on already, we cannot, I don't want to add to any more swing positions to manage. So if I look at our uh, YouTube picks over here, let's take a quick look. Netflix um, has still been going up today. Looks like it's hitting this high, bit of a high plus trend line coming into play on the stock is what I'm seeing, but we're still in this upward sloping channel, which I like to see. And it's been holding up very well when the market has been going down. So um, I still like Netflix here, and I think it's going to continue to slowly move higher. You can see the bias in the stock. Um, so we're still giving it time and we have shares in this, so we're not too worried. LIN is holding its own when the market is going down. So still like what I'm seeing in the stock. Um, and I'm not going to add to this until it clears this high right here. We have a starter position on. So if we see that, then we're going to add to the trade. Wells Fargo is also compressing. So that is doing fine. We also know that on the second compression break, we would add to the trade. 
We have our MSPCS um, slightly in the money here, um, below our short strike, but not really losing a lot of ground to SPY over here, just being a little bit choppy. So um, I, I'm planning to hold this until the expiration, and I would like to see uh, all of this level hold and MS shoot up higher in these next couple of days. So uh, those are our picks for today. My pick is going to be the PEP day trade that I mentioned. So we're going to add that um, to our picks. And I've outlined exactly how that would be for a day trade. So we're going to add that to our YouTube picks. Um, and that is it for today. So thanks everyone for watching. Uh, let's see what the market does later today. And I will catch you all tomorrow.